U.S. Secretary of State in Beijing, China. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Tonight, could there be a looming TikTok ban? The rare agreement between Republicans and Democrats in the House, but what will the Senate do? And what about the millions of Americans who use the popular social media app? Plus, were you surprised at how much prices went up in a short time? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely in grocery. It's like, you know, it's a quarter here, it's a buck and a half, that type of thing. But you still feel it. We're all feeling the pinch of inflation, but is it as bad as it seems? We get a reality check and... My symptoms have started in the early part of 2021, and it was like literally just tingling on my toes. And by the time we started shooting in the summer of that same year, I was being brought to set in a wheelchair. The ABC News exclusive Robin Roberts with Christina Applegate and Jamie Lynn Sigler. The actresses describing their shared battle with MS. Good evening, I'm Phil Lipoff, and tonight for Lindsay Davis, thanks so much for streaming with us. We are following those stories and much more tonight, including the judge in Georgia's election interference case dismissing six counts against Donald Trump and several co-defendants, what that means for the overall case. Plus the massive landslide in Los Angeles, residents evacuated, and actress Olivia Mumm revealing her personal battle with breast cancer, undergoing four surgeries since last year, why she says she's lucky. But we begin tonight with the battle raging on Capitol Hill about a possible nationwide ban of the popular social media app TikTok. An overwhelming majority in the House passed a measure today that could prevent TikTok's roughly 170 million American users from using the Chinese-owned app unless it is sold to a company that is not a foreign adversary within six months. China has called the House vote bullying. But in China, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram are all banned, and the version of TikTok Chinese users see is very different than the American one. All this comes as TikTok influencers and business owners protested in the nation's capital, some arguing that the ban would wipe out their family's income. President Biden has said he will sign the bill if it comes to his desk, but the question now is what will happen in the Senate where the bill faces an uncertain future. Senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott leads us off from Capitol Hill. Tonight, the House overwhelmingly voting to ban TikTok, the wildly popular social media app, unless it's sold by its Chinese parent company ByteDance. Lawmakers responding to concerns, TikTok poses a national security threat and compromises the data of its 170 million American users. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe, a winner, a winner. The FBI and top intelligence officials sounding the alarm, warning the Chinese government could use TikTok to access Americans' personal information. The problem is their ability to manipulate you. They already manipulate your alg algorithm based on what you like. And that can, be, that can be innocent. All social media companies do that to try and tailor your feed. But it's a problem when, when, when the person in charge, the entity in charge of manipulating can be an adversary like the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok denies those allegations, but lawmakers now warning TikTok could interfere in the election. The risk in terms of propaganda, the risk to influence our election are just too severe. In China, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube are banned completely. And the version of TikTok available over there is much different from what we get here. Listen to how a former Google executive described what kids see on the Chinese version of TikTok in an interview with 60 Minutes. They show you science experiments you can do at home, museum exhibits, patriotism videos, and educational videos. And they make their domestic version a spinach version of TikTok, while they ship the opium version to the rest of the world. TikTok pushing back hard, a fierce lobbying effort on Capitol Hill. Online, users enraged. I'm like literally shaking, thinking about the possibility of this. Have there been talks about this before? Sure. This time, it's serious. A 15 we spoke TikTok with Brandon Hurst. He uses TikTok to promote his plant business. My whole business would be devastated. Yeah, I would lose the opportunity to connect with millions of people on a regular basis. And the community that I've worked really hard to build would be, would be gone. How much of your sales are driven from TikTok? 100%. President Biden recently launched his own campaign, TikTok, to meet young voters where they are. But he says if this bill lands on his desk, 
he will sign it. If they pass it, I'll sign it. As president, Donald Trump once tried to ban TikTok by executive order, but now he's against a possible ban. He says it would help Facebook, which he's railed against. But Trump's change in tune also comes after he met with a top Republican donor who has a major financial stake in TikTok's parent company. Rachel joins us now from Capitol Hill. And Rachel, there in your report, you say that President Biden says he's ready to sign the bill, but first it has to pass the Senate. Yeah, first it has to pass the Senate, and even with the president's support, there are no signs that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer plans to move quickly to have a vote on this. In fact, he says that they will only be reviewing this legislation for now. Tonight, China is responding, blasting this move, insisting that it will only backfire on the U.S. And again, Phil, I want to go back to that point that we're making in the piece. The version of TikTok that's available in China is mostly educational and far different from what's available for users here in the U.S. Phil? All right, Rachel Scott from Capitol Hill. Rachel, thank you. On Capitol Hill this week, lobbying against the bill that could ban TikTok was JT Laybourne, a TikTok influencer with 1.7 million followers. Laybourne also has an adjacent apparel company on TikTok called Just Think, which he says provides his family with 90% of its income. JT joins us right now to talk more about this. JT, thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Really, 90% of your family's income derived from this apparel company, uh, you know, apparel that you sell on TikTok. If TikTok gets banned, what happens to your business? I mean, it almost goes away. Uh, we use TikTok to market everything um, because of its ability to connect with a community. Uh, this apparel brand wasn't just something we decided to start on our own. It was started because of the community on TikTok um, and they're kind enough to support us. So it is it's everything to us. So then explain for me your business model. Why does TikTok work better for you than, say, Facebook Marketplace, Instagram, or even just the Internet in general? Absolutely. Um, TikTok, it is so amazing how it is able to link you with like-minded human beings. It just it puts us together in a group of people that um, just want to support one another, make people smile. And that's what the Just Think movement is all about, is trying to leave the world a better place. Um, and it started on TikTok, it lives on TikTok, and it's just been our focus. And you kind of started there before this. You, you, were, you were doing videos with your family, and um, you started doing some videos, and then eventually used TikTok to raise money for charity. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so I uh, unfortunately found out that uh, my heart was failing in January of 2020, uh, and then ended up having to go through open heart surgery May of 2020. Um, my wife wasn't allowed to be by my side. Um, and it was TikTok, this community that showed up for the both of us. I'm sure it was scary. Um, and then you, you followed it up by, by raising money. Is, is the $1 million figure a number you hit? Did you raise a million dollars? Um, yeah, it, not just myself. I want to make that clear. It was the community on TikTok. I happened to share my story and was given the opportunity to um, start raising money on TikTok because of their donate feature. Let, let's talk about this a little bit. Congressman accused TikTok's Chinese-owned parent company, ByteDance, of actually being controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, potentially giving the Chinese government access to personal data. of Millions of Americans, you would be involved in that. Um, what do you say about those fears? Um, it's just that it's a it's a, a fear that isn't true. Um, I feel more secure and safe on TikTok than I do any other platform, and that's because TikTok has invested 1.5 billion dollars into my data privacy and, and safety um, more than any other platform out there. Uh, I, I'm very secure on TikTok. All right, and TikTok has made no secret of the fact that they've invested in an all-out lobbying blitz, uh, you know, in advance of today's vote. Just for transparency, I mean, you have 1.7 million followers, but are you working with them? Are they, is there a partnership? Are they paying you in any way to lobby? No, not at all. Um, of course, they assisted in us getting out here, but that's it. Uh, every single one of us would have done it anyways um, because it means so much to us. This platform has changed our lives forever. Um, TikTok was kind enough to cover our travel, but that's it. Uh, none of us are being paid to be here. Um, everybody is here to support their voice uh, so that their voice can be heard, to fight for something that we love, believe in, and know is amazing and true. Yeah, and so you're, you're there with other influencers like yourself. Um, ha have you met with many of the other influencers and have you met with lawmakers so far? And, and what has their reaction been to uh, all of these influencers there in Washington, D.C.? 
you know, the reaction has been mixed. I have met with a lot of the influencers here um, and it's amazing because we come from all walks. So we create all types of different uh, content and it's really amazing to see uh, the impact that TikTok has. As far as uh, the lawmakers go, um, I myself have not been lucky enough to uh, secure a meeting with any of my representatives. Um, I'm hoping to. I would love to sit down and talk with them. JT Laborn, thanks so much. TikTok influencer, business owner. We do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for letting us uh, get this out. It means a lot. Of course. Tonight, the judge overseeing Georgia's election interference case involving former President Trump and several co-defendants has ruled to toss out six counts. So what does that mean for the rest of the case? Here's ABC's Aaron Katursky. Tonight, all eyes on one judge in Georgia who's expected to rule this week on whether Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis should be removed from Donald Trump's election interference case. But today, the judge handing down a surprise decision and a setback for prosecutors, throwing out six criminal counts against the former president and some of his co-defendants. One of those counts involves Trump's phone call to Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, urging him to find the votes Trump needed to win. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. Prosecutors seized on that call to charge Trump with soliciting a public official to violate his oath of office. But today, Judge Scott McAfee ruled they failed to include sufficient detail and did not give the defendants enough information to prepare their defenses intelligently. Judge McAfee used similar reasoning to dismiss charges that Trump and some of his co-defendants pressured public officials to call a special session of the state legislature and decertify the election results. The opinion impacts the cases against not just Trump, but also his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, his one-time lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and three other defendants. The judge gave prosecutors six months to decide whether they want to refile those dropped charges, addressing his concerns. And that phone call with the Georgia Secretary of State will still play a key role in other parts of the case. The former president, who had been facing 13 counts in Georgia, now faces 10, including the most serious one, racketeering. He has pleaded not guilty. Aaron joins me now. Aaron, when do we expect the judge to rule on the district attorney? He said he'd do it by Friday, so either tomorrow, the next day, Phil. And he's weighing whether Fonnie Willis's relationship with a special prosecutor she hired to help run the case posed an actual conflict of interest or whether it's just the appearance of one. Phil? All right, Aaron Katursky, thank you. A student pilot is facing federal charges tonight, accused of trying to breach the cockpit during an Alaska Airlines flight from San Diego to Washington, D.C. According to an affidavit, Nathan Jones allegedly made three separate attempts to open the cockpit door before flight attendants finally called for help from eight off-duty officers who happened to be on board. When flight attendants allegedly asked Jones why he did it, they say he said he was testing them. And there is new trouble for Boeing tonight after a 777 plane took off from Sydney, had to turn around after a leak was spotted in its landing gear. The company is already under pressure and under investigation for a series of mishaps, causing some customers to avoid flights on their planes. ABC's Trevor Alt with more. Tonight, watch as moments after this Boeing 777 takes off in Sydney, hydraulic fluid is seen leaking from the landing gear. The plane carrying 183 passengers and crew heading to San Francisco Monday, turning around less than an hour into the flight, landing safely back at Sydney Airport, met by fire crews. It's the fifth incident involving a United Boeing plane in recent days, following this engine fire and this wheel falling off a jet during takeoff last week. And all this comes amid the investigation into that door plug that flew off an Alaska Airlines flight at 16,000 feet. Today, the NTSB says Boeing hasn't given them all the information they need. Officials telling the Senate Commerce Committee, we still do not know who performed the work on that door plug and that Boeing has been unable to find the records documenting this work. The NTSB also says security footage had been overwritten as part of standard procedure. We asked for security camera footage so we can understand who did the work, all their security camera footage is erased within 30 days and overwritten. In a statement, Boeing says we will continue supporting this investigation in the transparent and proactive fashion. The company promising changes to its safety procedures, including added layers of inspection.
And Phil, on that fuel leak in Sydney, United says the plane returned due to a maintenance issue and passengers were rebooked on a later flight. Phil. Our thanks to Trevor all tonight. Vladimir Putin is warning again that Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons. In an interview on state television, Putin reiterated Moscow's policy to use nuclear weapons on the battlefield if Russia's, quote, sovereignty and independence come under threat. That interview comes just days before elections are expected to result in Putin holding the presidency for another six years. We head to the Caribbean now and the danger in Haiti as gangs continue to surround the capital, the U.S. getting involved and sending in Marines to protect the U.S. Embassy, the race to evacuate fellow Americans, including author Mitch Albom. Uh, Matt Rivers is in neighboring Dominican Republic reporting on the crisis for us. Tonight, with Haiti in chaos, four Army helicopters flying an elite group of dozens of U.S. Marines into Port-au-Prince to reinforce security at the U.S. Embassy days after the military evacuated some American staffers before the sun came up. Thousands of Americans, like missionary Miriam Sonodi and her group, trapped and desperate to escape. They can come and get some, they need to come and get all. With gangs controlling the city, veteran-led rescue group Project Dynamo saying they're headed to Haiti to try and help evacuate American citizens caught in the violence. Two members of Congress also organizing a private evacuation of 10 Americans out of Haiti. That included best-selling author Mitch Album, who wrote Tuesdays with Maury. Album and his team saying goodbye to the children at the orphanage his charity runs, saying he's luckier than so many others still there amidst the violence. When we came over the Haiti airspace to the Dominican Republic and they said, OK, we're clear of Haiti airspace, my wife and I were kind of hit with a very deep pang of sadness because our kids are still there and our staff is still there. But for the vast majority of Americans there, like Jill Dolan, they can't escape, calling on the U.S. government to begin evacuations. Every day I wake up thinking, Lord, please send us a chopper. Please send us an airplane that's going to come and rescue us today. Matt joins me now. Matt, Haitians looking to flee the chaos continue trying to come into the United States via land and sea. Is the Biden administration doing anything from an immigration perspective to help them? Yeah, Phil, there's no question that this amount of violence, this amount of chaos in Port-au-Prince is going to force more Haitians to leave. Many of them will try to get to the United States. The administration knows that, and two administration officials telling ABC News that they are actually looking into the possibility of using Guantanamo Bay, the U.S. base in Cuba, as a processing facility temporarily for Haitian migrants. That's not confirmed yet. It's something that's in the works if this migration continues to, to grow in a way that the administration expects that it might. Phil. All right, Matt Rivers from the Dominican Republic tonight. Matt, thank you. The case of the Michigan father charged with involuntary manslaughter for his son's deadly school attack is now in the hands of the jury. James Crumbly chose not to testify, telling the judge, quote, it is my decision to remain silent. His wife, Jennifer, was convicted on the very same charges last month. Their son, Ethan, is serving a life sentence for killing four students at an Ohio school in 2021. They are the first parents to be charged in a child's school attack. Oklahoma teenager Nex Benedict, whose death sparked outrage and calls for change, died by suicide, according to the medical examiner. Benedict's death came one day after being injured in an altercation inside an Owasso High School bathroom. Police are investigating what led up to the fight, including whether the non-binary team was targeted in an act of gender-based violence. Nex's death has led to nationwide scrutiny over the safety of transgender and gay children in the state of Oklahoma, specifically. And now to Los Angeles, where a landslide has wiped out a home and now threatens at least two others after a powerful round of storms. This, as a new storm system moves across the country, putting nine states on high alert. Our Rob Marciano has the forecast in just a moment. Faith Abube kicks off our team coverage with a look at the damage. Tonight, splintered and crushed, a massive landslide taking out homes in the L.A. suburbs. Look at the portion of the decking that gave way in the backyard of this home and a portion of the decking that is still upright as it slid down the hill. It happened just before 3 a.m. in densely populated Sherman Oaks. At least three homes damaged. Part of the back of this home sheared off. Huge cracks in the concrete and tile. No one was hurt, but multiple people had to be evacuated from the homes. The one sustaining the most damage was under construction with no one inside. 
It was significantly impacted where the mud was from floor to ceiling inside. Months of record rain have flooded Southern California streets and homes, even washing away whole cliffs. The region saturated to the point that landslides can happen at any time. Families here on edge. I'm always concerned about the rain, landslides, fires. Everything has been increasing over the last couple of years. Now to that cross-country storm bringing heavy snow and high wind. Nine states are on alert tonight from California to Montana to New Mexico, and it will bring rain to the Northeast by Friday. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano timing it all out. Rob. Hey, Phil, you know, Denver gets some of their biggest snowstorms in the month of March, and that's exactly where we are. So we've got winter storm warnings that are posted for uh, much of Colorado. Also, wind alerts back through California. This thing's really going to sit around for a little while here, but up to two, three, maybe even four feet of snow right at the Continental Divide and points eastward. This is an upslope event, so a foot possible, especially in the western suburbs of Denver. Heavy wet snow, difficult to shovel. At ahead of this, we've got severe weather already bubbling up tonight. Watches up for northern parts of Kansas and into St. Louis until mid night that watch area or at least the convective area expands greatly tomorrow as the rain quickly moves into Chicago and Detroit while it's still snowing in Denver and then look for convective storms to bubble up with the potential of damaging winds and tornadoes especially across Arkansas and into Memphis late in the day and then this storm does get into the northeast and east coast on Friday with some rainfall. Phil. All right Rob thanks. Dollar Tree is closing nearly 1,000 of its family dollar stores across the U.S. The discount chain says it will shut down 600 stores in this year's first half. 370 family dollar stores and 30 Dollar Tree stores will close over the next several years. The announcement comes following an unexpected surprise fourth quarter loss in its earnings report. There is still much more to get to here tonight on Prime. Frontier Airlines offering an option for those of you who may be willing to pay to not have someone sit in that middle seat. But next, inflation has dropped, but do you feel like your expenses have not? Elizabeth Schulze speaks to business owners who are struggling to keep up. Not as a small business. For someone who is starting out anew, it's tougher. It's a tougher economy. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today? Escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about. The migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not a pair, in it? How important made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Everything I've experienced, it made me realize what I want and what I don't want. Tom Brady and Giselle Bundchen announcing their divorce. You didn't think that the marriage would end. You said it was the death of a dream. Yeah. How are you? Well, when you say... Sorry, guys. I didn't know... Can I have a little moment? Giselle Bundchen climbing the mountain. I'm leaving my truth and I'm not apologizing for it. Now streaming on Hulu.
Start their day here. From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Welcome back to the pinch of inflation from gas to groceries. We're all feeling it. But right now, is the economy as bad as it seems? In tonight's Prime Focus, our Elizabeth Schulze spoke with U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen and small business owners in Chicago about the reality of prices and how it could impact how people vote in November. It's been three years since Mia Sakai packed up her life in New York to open Undelay Market in Chicago. You're all set. Bye, dude. See ya. Her dream? To recreate the bodega experience in the heart of the Midwest. In essence, it's like a love letter to the bodega. A love letter to the bodega. I love it. Within months of opening in December 2020, Mia was confronted with unexpected snags in the supply chain brought on by the pandemic. And soon after, rising costs for everything from cheese to eggs. Were you surprised at how much prices went up in a short time? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely in grocery, it's like, you know, it's a quarter here, it's a buck and a half, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But you still feel it, for sure. Like many small businesses, she was forced to pass down those higher costs to her customers. Hi, how are you? It's not an easy thing to do, and it's not something we like to do, but we also want to be able to keep our business here and continue to be able to service the neighborhood. Do you want a bag with that? And while shoppers absorbed the price hikes and her business kept growing, a sense of unease has set in over the economy. What word comes to mind when you think about the economy? Influx. 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 Sticker shock at the grocery store is one explanation for why Americans are down on the economy. Between 2019 and 2023, food inflation increased by 25%, faster than other categories like housing, clothes, and medical care. Do you still notice those higher prices that so many people feel when they go grocery shopping, when they're buying food for the week? Yes, sometimes when I'm buying something I haven't bought for a long time, I do notice that the prices are higher, but I don't expect that to continue. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is the Biden administration's top economic official and former chair of the Federal Reserve. We met her just a few miles away from Mia's shop in Chicago. Please welcome Treasury Secretary Dr. Janet Yellen. Yellen was there to deliver a major speech, part of a mission to try to convince Americans that inflation and the broader economy isn't as bad as they might think. Apartment rents, food, or maybe 20% higher than they were before the pandemic. But what's happening for more than a year now, wages are rising more rapidly than prices. The typical American household is now spending $1,019 more every month on the same goods and services compared to three years ago because of inflation. But wages are up an average of $1,072 every month during that time, offsetting the higher prices. What do you say to Americans who see this data, but say they are just not feeling that economic strength. Recent surveys suggest that picture is changing. We've seen a massive improvement in consumer sentiment. After reaching a record low in June 2022, a popular index of American sentiment about the economy is rebounding, a trend the Biden administration is eager to highlight amid dismal economic approval ratings. Polls show voters overwhelmingly favor former President Trump for his handling of the economy. Do you think you'll vote for Joe Biden again? Uh, right now, I don't know who I'm voting for. Not far from Yellen's speech in Chicago, vintage store owner and lifelong Democratic voter Alexandria Jones isn't yet convinced. A lot of the data about the economy is really strong. It shows that the jobs market is good and wages are up, prices are cooling. Do you feel that? 
not as a small business. For someone who is starting out anew, it's tougher. It's a tougher economy. One reason it's tough, that unaffordable rent. A few months ago, her landlord delivered an unexpected blow. My rent was $1,400, it's $1,750 now. That's a big difference. Yeah. Alexandria says her margins are so tight she can't afford to hire employees, which has gotten more expensive as wages increase. Last year, I clocked not being here 11 days mm. out of 365 days because I had to be here. At Rattleback Records, just a few blocks away, owner Paul Rufino says he's lucky to say business has been steady despite those rising prices. A record that we would, when we first opened in 2018, that we would sell for maybe 21 99 is probably now 28 or 29.99. And have customers been able to absorb those higher prices? It seems like it. He says the problem with the economy now isn't as much about the message as the messenger. The unemployment is low, uh, inflation has slowed, so I think that things seem to be moving in the right direction and, and hopefully will continue to. Why do you think it is that people don't necessarily say that or voters say they don't feel that way? Yeah, I wish I had. Don't you wish you had that answer? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not saying that people's reality isn't real for them. You think President Biden can take more credit for the economy? I think he should. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job. Our thanks to Elizabeth Schulze for that. And there is still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, no one likes a rat. And the New Orleans Police Department is no exception. We're going to tell you about the rats who ate marijuana. But next, the impact of TikTok has had here and around the world by the numbers. So the question is, what would you do Hi. if you saw a mother reject her son's new girlfriend because of the color of her skin? I thought I was going to meet your girlfriend. Uh, you are meeting my girlfriend. This is your girlfriend. Was there a misunderstanding? Well, maybe. <laughs> would you say something? Mom, you're being a little crazy here, I think. Seriously? Yeah. Knock it off. What do you mean, knock it off? So the question is, what would you do Sunday night, all new, right after American Idol on ABC? This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Chicago. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. You should see me. Strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in a crowd. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane. Celebrity attorney Tom Girardi. This story was a nuclear explosion. Today, several victims will get a chance to finally meet Erica Girardi. I'm at sort of a loss for what to say. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. The Housewife and the Hustler? I did. I wanted Erica to say, I'm sorry, face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? The Housewife and the Hustler 2. Only on Hulu. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. You 
Chappelle. Your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love that. Me. I'm Britt Clenet on board a destroyer, the USS Gravely on the Red Sea. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. A ban on TikTok would pit politicians against millions of Americans who use the social media platform for fun and to make money. TikTok is tonight's by the numbers. At least 170 million Americans are monthly users of TikTok. Remarkable considering the app was only released in 2016. Facebook and Instagram still dominate, but in 2021, TikTok did blow past X, then called Twitter, in terms of users. And you're not alone. TikTok exists in about 160 countries and is translated into 57 languages. States jumped on the legislative bandwagon long before Congress did, 39 states have already banned the platform from government-owned phones and computers. But according to an Associated Press poll, Americans are split. split. Approximately one-third of all adults polled were strongly or somewhat in favor of a ban. One-third were indifferent, one-third were at least somewhat opposed. But we could be getting ahead of ourselves here. The Senate, as we've said, must still vote on any potential TikTok ban and First Amendment court battles could sink the effort altogether. There is still much more ahead here on Prime. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is coming to the defense of officers who tased a man while he held a baby. And actress Christina Applegate opens up to our Robin Roberts about life with multiple sclerosis. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. And the magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, Start Here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Their reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not okay, ain't it? How important made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Welcome back. Olivia Munn's breast cancer diagnosis. Adidas plans to donate profits from Yeezy sneakers and rats eating marijuana, which was evidence in a case. These stories and more in tonight's rundown. Mayor Adams is defending the actions of NYPD officers who used a stun gun on a migrant at a shelter in Queens. The man was tased while he was holding his one-year-old son. Police say they were called because an intoxicated man was threatening the staff. Police used a stun gun and then punched and wrestled him to the floor. Mayor Adams says officials reviewed the officer's body cam video and determined they took appropriate action. Riley Strain, the University of Missouri student who vanished in Nashville, was caught on several surveillance videos released overnight. The student was last seen leaving a bar while visiting Nashville with his fraternity brothers. As seen in the surveillance videos, the 22-year-old walked alone and stumbled down a street around 9.46 p.m. on Friday, March 8th. Police have combed the streets, including the Riverbank area, looking for the student. The search is still ongoing. Actress Olivia Munn revealed that she was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent a double mastectomy. The 43-year-old actress posted a statement on social media sharing her diagnosis and saying that she hoped, quote, this will help others find comfort, inspiration, and support. According to Munn, she got a biopsy which found an aggressive form of cancer in both breasts and underwent surgery a month later. She is now recovering and she thanked her friends and family, especially her husband, comedian John Mulaney. Adidas says it's planning to give away more than $150 million from the sales of Yeezy shoes to groups fighting anti-Semitism and other forms of hate. The company at one point had $3 billion worth of Yeezy sneakers piled up in warehouses after it severed ties with Ye, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West, and will now sell some of the remaining shoes in batches and donate a portion of the proceeds to anti-hate groups. Frontier Airlines is introducing a new upgrade seating option that would guarantee an empty middle seat with the option called Upfront Plus. Passengers can choose either a window or aisle seat, and the middle seat will not be taken. This will apply to flights departing on or after April 10th and through April 30th. The upgrade costs about $50 per passenger. New Orleans police announced that rats have overrun the force's evidence and property room, destroying evidence collected in drug busts. The rats eating our marijuana, they're all high. The police superintendent said there is an infestation of rats in the department's headquarters and that police officers have also found droppings on their desks. She spelled out the problem as the city council moves forward on a plan to move the headquarters to a different building. A new documentary is shining a light on what happened behind the scenes of some of Nickelodeon's most popular kid shows in the 90s and early 2000s, ahead of a two-part documentary's premiere Sunday. Eva Pilgrim spoke with two of the featured former child stars. For children of the 90s and early 2000s, Nickelodeon was home to some of the most popular shows of the era, from the sketch comedy hit All That to The Amanda Show. But in the new Investigation Discovery docuseries, Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, some of the former child stars behind those shows say they were subjected to inappropriate work environments. One star even claiming he was sexually abused. If we don't get all these people out of here in less than two hours, our lives are over. Drake Bell from the show Drake and Josh revealing for the first time publicly that he is the John Doe victim in the 2003 child sexual abuse case against his dialogue coach, Brian Peck. Bell claims that Peck purposely isolated him from his father, who was also his manager. I think Brian got a sense that my dad was on the watch. And so he started to really drive a wedge between my dad and me. He started talking about how my dad's stealing my money. 
Nobody likes that my dad's on set. He's a real problem. I was believing it because he's been in this business for so long and he must know more than us. Peck was convicted in 2004, sentenced to 16 months in prison, and is now a registered sex offender. Bell says that abuse put him on a path of self-destruction, including two DUIs and a 2021 child endangerment conviction. Nickelodeon saying in a statement, we are dismayed and saddened to learn of the trauma he has endured, and we commend and support the strength required to come forward. I can't even describe the feeling to know that there was a monster among, among us. Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn starred in All That in 2001 and say Peck worked closely with the child actors. When you saw who the victim was, it broke my heart. I cried. We weren't close with Drake, mm -hmm. but we were around him. He was a legend. And so to find out that he was being harmed Brutally in, hard. In a, in a terrible way, what is, it, it infuriated me. Hearn and Samuels also speaking about former writer and executive producer Dan Schneider, who Nickelodeon parted ways with in 2018 after complaints he created a hostile work environment. What was it like working for Dan Schneider? Dan... <laughs> You're asking the two black children on a Nickelodeon set where we were overlooked. The actors this were calling sketches written by Schneider's team problems. like on air dare. Yeah. Those were torture moments for all of us. Hearns Dare had him covered in peanut butter and then licked by dogs. My on air dare, I was saying, I don't like this. And to see that is and to voice it and, and to have voiced it. I don't like this and to be ignored because, oh, it's funny. Yeah. Is it, was it funny? Come Who on. was it funny for? Right. One for me. Hearn and Samuel say My they family, hope the series sparks an important like, oh, conversation like, okay. about the treatment Both of child me. actors. No, like, Your childhood you. is gonna be a little tainted after watching it, yeah. but I hope that it helps you protect the next group of kids yeah. that comes up. Our thanks to Eva Pilgrim. On the hostile workplace allegations, Nickelodeon tells ABC News while it cannot cooperate or negate allegations from productions decades ago, it investigates complaints and it has adopted numerous safeguards over the years. And a spokesperson for Schneider says scripts went through layers of approval and that, quote, Dan expected and asked a lot from his teams, but he also knows some people did not have a positive experience and he is truly sorry for that. Now to an exclusive conversation with Christina Applegate and Jamie Lynn Sigler, the actresses both dealing with multiple sclerosis and have become a real support system for each other. ABC's Robin Roberts sat with the two to discuss how their openness has helped them cope. After four decades in the spotlight, Christina Applegate with good friend Jamie Lynn Sigler by her side. She's doing this because I have the, the tremor. So she's well, also because I love her. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah candid about her life since being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2021. Do you feel the love, Christina? I mean, yes, yes. I, I live kind of in hell. That raw honesty <laughs> infused with humor um, carrying her through. And when we saw you last at the Emmys presenting, and I, can I just say the emotions that I felt <laughs> when you came out on that stage? shaming me with disability by standing up. It's fine. Okay. Um, Were you able to take in the moment, the standing ovation and everything? Yeah, I was really, I actually kind of blacked out. Um, and I, people said, oh, you were so funny. And I'm like, I don't even know what I said. And I felt really beloved and it was really a beautiful thing. Then I'm just gonna say this, that audience stood up for everybody. <laughs> oh, come on. There's something I have to confess. The seven-time Emmy nominee was filming the final season of her Netflix show, Dead to Me, when she noticed something was wrong. My symptoms had started in the early part of 2021, and it was like literally just tingling on my toes. And by the time we started shooting in the summer of that same year, I was being brought to set in a wheelchair. Like, I couldn't walk that far. <clears throat> so I had to tell everybody, because I needed help. You know, I needed someone to help me stand, and I needed someone to help, sorry. I need someone to help me to get there. Mm -hmm. It's okay. 
and they were wonderful. But I probably had it for many, many years. When do you I mean, think I you first had? When do you, probably had how it. How long like, do you think what, you've had it without probably realizing? Six or seven years, I think. Yeah, I think I've noticed, especially the first season, we'd be shooting and I would like buckle, like my my leg would buckle. I really just kind of put it off as as being tired, or I'm dehydrated, or mm. it's the weather, or you know, and then nothing would happen for like months, and I didn't pay attention. But when it hit this hard, I had to pay attention. She credits her former co-star and good friend, Selma Blair, for urging her to get tested for MS. Whatever happened to my cool, confident roommate? Mm. It's a big facade. Blair was also diagnosed with a degenerative disease of the central nervous system in 2018. She goes, you need to be checked for MS. I said, no. Really? The odds? The two of us from the same movie? Come on, that's not going to be. That doesn't happen. Mm. She knew. She encouraged you to? She, if, if not for her, it could have been way worse. Oh, it's like the sisterhood. Yeah. The sisterhood that you don't really want to be a part of. Jamie was starring in The Sopranos when she was diagnosed with MS at just 20 years old. Believe it or not, the world doesn't revolve around you. The two have bonded over their shared disease, supporting each other through its unique challenges. You're in different places and you're helping each other because I love how you've given her permission to go, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And you didn't used to, you wouldn't say that before. No. Never. She keeps me going because I'm the one who's like, <laughs> you know, I'm flipping the bird all day long at this thing and I'm angry. I'm really, really pissed. You know, I was a dancer and a runner and I got all these things and that I love and a mom and, and it's like, mmm. And she's like, okay, I have you and you are going to be okay. Like life, you're going to be okay. And, and if not for her, I don't, really honestly don't know. Mm. For so long, I've been celebrated for being the strong one and the positive one that it, it felt like mm. I was not that if I would admit that some days were hard but she has really pushed me to be able to say that because I th thought I was letting people down if I would talk about mm. how hard it was sometimes. And it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. It's not my favorite disease. I've had a couple. <laughs> it's not my favorite one. So are you still in a grieving process? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not putting a time stamp on it. Yeah, I don't Good think it you. ends. Yeah. Get I'm never gonna wake up and go, this is awesome. No. I'm just gonna tell you that. Like, it's just not going to happen. I wake up and I'm reminded of it every day. So there's, it's not going to happen. But I might get to a place where I will function a little bit better. Right now I'm isolating. And that's kind of how I'm dealing with it, is by, like, not going anywhere. Because I don't want to do it. It's hard. They call it the invisible disease, you know? But mm. it's going to be very lonely. Yeah. Because it's hard to explain. To people, you know, yeah. like, like I'm in excruciating pain, but I'm just used to it now. Mm. You know, it's hard to let yeah, that I'm waiting. go. I'm waiting. That's why I'm sleeping. I want someone to just <laughs> wake me up when it's over. Just wake me up when we can be like, you're good. Thank you. The two friends are launching a podcast, Messy. So this is our conversation about stuffs. Where they will welcome their famous friends and co-stars to get real about the messiness of life. You're really eavesdropping on an intimate conversation. That's all it is. And to me, those are my favorite podcasts, where you feel like you just got to like somehow listen in on a conversation with people. There's no format, no agenda, no questions that were coming, and it's messy. It's for sure a mess. Yeah. What is it that you want people? Why should they listen? I think, one, to, to feel seen if they're going yeah. through this, to feel heard, even if it's not MS. You know, I've been playing a character called Christina for 40 years, you know, who I wanted everybody to think I was because it's easier. But like this is like, it's kind of my coming out party. Yeah. Like this is who, this is the person I've been this whole time. I said that to her mm. from day one. Because I was, I was kind of putting on a little, a little act for everybody for so long. And, and cause I didn't, I just thought that was easier to be light, be funny, be light. Don't make people feel uncomfortable. And I don't care anymore. So that's that's kind of what this is. Too, After we you know? recorded our first episode and we listened to it, the first thing I did was call her. And I was like, I am so excited 
for people to get to know this Christina. I just feel like I have a front row seat for, I know it's hard and I know it's hard to see, but like a really beautiful chapter for her. I really believe that. Well, Christina Applegate, it's nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Again, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nice to finally, to finally meet, meet you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful supportive friendship. Robin, thank you for that. Athletes from Howard University are making history as the first ever HBCU figure skating team. The group is gliding to success with support from a Maryland based nonprofit providing mentorship and scholarships. H U U N O Diversify Figure skating has a terrible birth defect of racism. And if you look to today, you know, just in the past few years, my brother Emmanuel Savory and Star Andrews were the only two people of color at the senior figure skating championships to have competed. I started Diverse Bias Foundation in 2017, you know, really when I started to realize just how expansive this issue was, not only in my community. So I really wanted to provide those sponsorship, mentorship, networks, and opportunities to skaters across the country. Our next skater represents Howard University. Figure skating is one of the most incredibly freeing moments when you're out there on the ice, when you're gliding and feeling the wind just kind of blowing behind you. It just feels wonderful to go out there and express yourself to the music that's playing. It's just the most wonderful feeling to be out there. And when you're able to impart that feeling to someone else when you're coaching them and having them feel that same liberating moment on the ice, it is the most special feeling. There will be 15 teams competing in the team maneuvers, so Howard University is looking forward to skating their best here. There really is no diversity in the judging panel, as well as there being really no diversity in the competitive skaters themselves. So, you know, coming in as a new team, whether it's the Howard team here or even any of our other competitive skaters, you know, at the elite national, international level, one thing we do is really explain how important it is to just stay true to who you are. However, we are astutely aware of, you know, just the differences in what we might consider artistic. Uh, for one, people of color a lot of times have a slightly different body type in, in the way that we ha hold our hair, maybe hold our positions. If it doesn't fit the body type that a judge may be used to, they may take deductions for that. I want to see this sport really become reflective of who we are in America and what we are is colorful. And that's our show for this hour. I'm Phil Lipoff. Stay with ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Coming up in the next hour, the battle over TikTok takes center stage on Capitol Hill, and we bring you the latest on the spiraling chaos in Haiti and what the U.S. is doing to help. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane. Celebrity attorney Tom Girardi. This story was a nuclear explosion. Today, several victims will get a chance to finally meet Erica Girardi. And that's sort of a loss for what to say. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. The Housewife and the Hustler? I did. I wanted Erica to say, I'm sorry, face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? The Housewife and the Hustler 2. Only on Hulu. You should see me. The strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in a crowd. Wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Good evening. This is ABC News Live Prime. I'm Phil Lipoff in tonight for Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We have got a lot of news to get to this evening, including the judge in Georgia's election interference case dismissing six counts against Donald Trump and several co-defendants, what that means for the overall case. Plus, the scare aboard a passenger jet flying from San Diego to Washington, D.C., a young man, a student pilot, trying to breach the cockpit multiple times, what they had to do to restrain him. And the danger in Haiti, the U.S. now deploying U.S. Marines, an anti-terror team, to protect the U.S. Embassy there in Haiti. But we are going to begin tonight with the battle raging on Capitol Hill about a possible nationwide ban on the popular social media app TikTok. An overwhelming majority in the House passed a measure today that could prevent TikTok's roughly 170 million American users from using the Chinese-owned app unless it is sold to a company that is not a foreign adversary within six months. China has called the House vote bullying, but in China, YouTube... Facebook and Instagram are all banned, and the version of TikTok Chinese users see is very different than the American version. All this comes as TikTok influencers and business owners protested in our nation's capital, some arguing that the ban would wipe out their family's income. President Biden has said he will sign the bill if it comes to his desk, but the big question now is what will happen in the Senate where the bill faces an uncertain future. Senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott leads us off from Capitol Hill. Tonight, the House overwhelmingly voting to ban TikTok, the wildly popular social media app, unless it's sold by its Chinese parent company ByteDance. Lawmakers responding to concerns, TikTok poses a national security threat and compromises the data of its 170 million American users. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tick tack toe, a winner, a winner. The FBI and top intelligence officials sounding the alarm, warning the Chinese government could use TikTok to access Americans' personal information. The problem is their ability to manipulate you. They already manipulate your alg algorithm based on what you like. And that can, be, that can be innocent. All social media companies do that to try and tailor your feed. But it's a problem when, when, when the person in charge, the entity in charge of manipulating can be an adversary like the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok denies those allegations, 
but lawmakers now warning TikTok could interfere in the election. The risk in terms of propaganda, the risk to influence our election are just too severe. In China, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube are banned completely. And the version of TikTok available over there is much different from what we get here. Listen to how a former Google executive described what kids see on the Chinese version of TikTok in an interview with 60 Minutes. They show you science experiments you can do at home, museum exhibits, patriotism videos, and educational videos. And they make their domestic version a spinach version of TikTok, while they ship the opium version to the rest of the world. TikTok pushing back hard, a fierce lobbying effort on Capitol Hill. Online, users enraged. I'm like literally shaking, thinking about the possibility of this. Have there been talks about this before? Sure. This time, it's serious. A 15 we spoke TikTok with Brandon Hurst. He uses TikTok to promote his plant business. My whole business would be devastated. Yeah, I would lose the opportunity to connect with millions of people on a regular basis. And the community that I've worked really hard to build would be, would be gone. How much of your sales are driven from TikTok? 100%. President Biden recently launched his own campaign, TikTok, to meet young voters where they are. But he says if this bill lands on his desk, he will sign it. If they pass it, I'll sign it. As president, Donald Trump once tried to ban TikTok by executive order, but now he's against a possible ban. He says it would help Facebook, which he's railed against. But Trump's change in tune also comes after he met with a top Republican donor who has a major financial stake in TikTok's parent company. Our thanks to Rachel Scott from Capitol Hill tonight. Also, the judge overseeing Georgia's election interference case involving former President Trump and several co-defendants has ruled to toss out six counts. So what does that mean for the case? Here's ABC's Aaron Katursky. Tonight, all eyes on one judge in Georgia who's expected to rule this week on whether Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis should be removed from Donald Trump's election interference case. But today, the judge handing down a surprise decision and a setback for prosecutors, throwing out six criminal counts against the former president and some of his co-defendants. One of those counts involves Trump's phone call to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, urging him to find the votes Trump needed to win. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. Prosecutors seized on that call to charge Trump with soliciting a public official to violate his oath of office. But today, Judge Scott McAfee ruled they failed to include sufficient detail and did not give the defendants enough information to prepare their defenses intelligently. Judge McAfee used similar reasoning to dismiss charges that Trump and some of his co-defendants pressured public officials to call a special session of the state legislature and decertify the election results. The opinion impacts the cases against not just Trump, but also his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, his one-time lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and three other defendants. The judge gave prosecutors six months to decide whether they want to refile those dropped charges, addressing his concerns. And that phone call with the Georgia Secretary of State will still play a key role in other parts of the case. The former president, who had been facing 13 counts in Georgia, now faces 10, including the most serious one, racketeering. He's pleaded not guilty. Our thanks to Aaron Katursky for that. There is new trouble for Boeing tonight after a 777 plane took off from Sydney and had to turn around after a leak was spotted in the landing gear. The company is already under pressure, as you know, and under investigation for a series of mishaps, causing some customers to avoid flights on their planes altogether. ABC's Trevor Alt. Tonight, watch as moments after this Boeing 777 takes off in Sydney, hydraulic fluid is seen leaking from the landing gear. The plane carrying 183 passengers and crew heading to San Francisco Monday, turning around less than an hour into the flight, landing safely back at Sydney Airport, met by fire crews. It's the fifth incident involving a United Boeing plane in recent days, following this engine fire and this wheel falling off a jet during takeoff last week. And all this comes amid the investigation into that door plug that flew off an Alaska Airlines flight at 16,000 feet. Today, the NTSB says Boeing hasn't given them all the information they need. Officials telling the Senate Commerce Committee, we still do not know who performed the work on that door plug and that Boeing has been unable to find the records documenting this work. The NTSB also says security footage had been overwritten as part of standard procedure. We asked for security camera footage so we can understand 
and who did the work, all their security camera footage is erased within 30 days and overwritten. In a statement, Boeing says we will continue supporting this investigation in the transparent and proactive fashion. The company promising changes to its safety procedures, including added layers of inspection. Our thanks to Trevor Alt. We are learning more at this hour about a scare on board a passenger jet from San Diego to Washington, D.C. A young man, a student pilot, allegedly trying to breach the cockpit multiple times. Tonight, we have learned off-duty officers who just happened to be on board stepped in to restrain him. Here's ABC's Mola Lange. Tonight, a 19-year-old student pilot is facing federal charges after allegedly trying to breach the cockpit while he was a passenger on an Alaskan Airlines flight from San Diego to Washington, D.C. He attempted to uh, access the flight deck uh, three times. According to an affidavit, Nathan Jones allegedly got out of his seat multiple times and made three separate attempts to open the cockpit door before flight attendants called for help from eight off-duty officers who happened to be on board. They restrained Jones in flex cuffs until the 737 landed. He's uh, just uh, very confused, uh, but then he would not listen to uh, taking the seat. And after many repeated attempts, uh, then they decided to just put the, the plastic cuffs on him. When flight attendants allegedly asked Jones why he did it, he said he was testing them. Agents who searched his belongings found his student pilot's license and notes on how to operate an aircraft. Our thanks to Mola Lange. Now to Los Angeles, where a landslide has wiped out a home and now threatens at least two others after a powerful round of storms. This, as a new storm system, moves across the country, putting nine states on high alert. Our Rob Marciano has the forecast in just a moment. Faith Abube kicks off our team coverage with a look at the damage. Tonight, splintered and crushed, a massive landslide taking out homes in the L.A. suburbs. Look at the portion of the decking that gave way in the backyard of this home and a portion of the decking that is still upright as it slid down the hill. It happened just before 3 a.m. in densely populated Sherman Oaks. At least three homes damaged. Part of the back of this home sheared off. Huge cracks in the concrete and tile. No one was hurt, but multiple people had to be evacuated from the homes. The one sustaining the most damage damage was under construction with no one inside. It was significantly impacted where the mud was from floor to ceiling inside. Months of record rain have flooded Southern California streets and homes, even washing away whole cliffs. The region saturated to the point that landslides can happen at any time. Families here on edge. I'm always concerned about the rain, landslides, fires. Everything has been increasing over the last couple of years. Faith, thank you. Now to that cross-country storm bringing heavy snow and high wind. Nine states are on alert tonight from California to Montana to New Mexico, and it will bring rain to the Northeast by Friday. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano timing it all out. Rob. Hey, Phil, you know, Denver gets some of their biggest snowstorms in the month of March, and that's exactly where we are. So we've got winter storm warnings that are posted for uh, much of Colorado. Also, wind alerts back through California. This thing's really going to sit around for a little while here, but up to two, three, maybe even four feet of snow right at the Continental Divide and points eastward. This is an upslope event, so a foot possible, especially in the western suburbs of Denver. Heavy wet snow, difficult to shovel. At ahead of this, we've got severe weather already bubbling up tonight. Watches up for northern parts of Kansas and into St. Louis until mid night that watch area or at least the convective area expands greatly tomorrow as the rain quickly moves into Chicago and Detroit while it's still snowing in Denver and then look for convective storms to bubble up with the potential of damaging winds and tornadoes especially across Arkansas and into Memphis late in the day and then this storm does get into the northeast and east coast on Friday with some rainfall. Phil. All right Rob thanks. To the Caribbean now and the danger in Haiti as gangs continue to surround the capital. The U.S. getting involved and in sending in Marines to protect the U.S. Embassy. The race to evacuate fellow Americans, including author Mitch Album. Our Matt Rivers is in neighboring Dominican Republic reporting on this crisis. Tonight with Haiti in chaos, four army helicopters flying an elite group of dozens of U.S. Marines into Port-au-Prince to reinforce security at the U.S. Embassy days after the military evacuated some American staffers before the sun came up. Thousands of Americans like missionary Miriam Sonodi and her group trapped and desperate to escape. They can come and get some, they need to come and get all. 
With gangs controlling the city, veteran-led rescue group Project Dynamo saying they're headed to Haiti to try and help evacuate American citizens caught in the violence. Two members of Congress also organizing a private evacuation of 10 Americans out of Haiti. That included best-selling author Mitch Album, who wrote Tuesdays with Maury. Album and his team saying goodbye to the children at the orphanage his charity runs, saying he's luckier than so many others still there amidst the violence. When we came over the Haiti airspace to the Dominican Republic and they said, okay, we're clear of Haiti airspace, my wife and I were kind of hit with a very deep pang of sadness because our kids are still there and our staff is still there. But for the vast majority of Americans there, like Jill Dolan, they can't escape calling on the U.S. government to begin evacuations. Every day I wake up thinking, Lord, please send us a chopper. Please send us an airplane that's going to come and rescue us today. Our thanks to Matt Rivers. There is still much more to get to tonight. Coming up, Grammy-nominated artist Tierra Wack joins us in studio to discuss her new album. But next, people running for cover after a deadly gas explosion. We're going to tell you where this happened. Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In Rolling Fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Yeah with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. <laughs> it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Their reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag is okay, it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. I'm Matt Gutman at this march in Israel. These are the families of the hostages being held in Gaza. Wherever the news is, we'll take you there. We're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. We are tracking several headlines around the world right now. Dash cam video showing a deadly blast in northern China. Take a look at this. People could be seen running for cover, including a woman who was actually hit by falling debris. Officials say the explosion originated at a restaurant. They believe it was caused by a gas leak. At least two people were killed and more than 25 injured. Several aircrafts airdropped aid into northern Gaza, where agencies say the need is the greatest right now. The U.S. says its contribution was more than 35,000 meals and more than 28,000 bottles of water. It came as explosions, as you see, were spotted in the area, with the Israeli army deploying ground troops there in its fight against the terror group Hamas. As Paris gets ready to host the Olympics, the city's mayor says she hopes Russian athletes will be banned from taking part in both the games and the opening ceremony over the war in Ukraine. For now, Russian athletes cannot take part under their country's flag because of previous doping violations, but are allowed to participate as neutrals without flags or anthems being played. The International Olympic Committee will soon decide whether that changes for the Summer Olympics. Genre-bending Grammy-nominated rapper, musician, and visual artist Tierra Wack has captivated audiences with her imaginative and innovative sound since her a critically acclaimed project, Wack World. Collaborations since with artists like Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Lil Yachty. Now, Tierra is stepping into a new era of music, releasing what she's calling her 
debut album, Worldwide Whack, featuring lead single, Shower Song. Take a listen. I sound great. When I'm singing in the shower. Soap and water get the flowers. When I'm singing in the shower. You know how many of us say that? <laughs> we all sound great singing in the shower. Everybody. We are thrilled to have Tierra Wack with us here in studio. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to come in. And congratulations uh, on the upcoming release of the long-awaited Worldwide Wack. You're calling it your debut album, but we've had music from you for quite a while. So tell us yes. why you're calling First it the debut First of all, debut. I want to say thank you so much for having me here. Of course. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me that question. My first project, uh, Wack World, to me was just an introduction appetizer, I, I would call it, like an appetizer. But this World Wide Wack, this is, is much more. It's an entree. It's the full package, no holding back. Um, I created this character, World Wide Wack, to basically show the representation of the struggle that the performer faces, uh, being alone in a crowd while still having to show up for millions. You recently released the visuals for your new single, 27 Club. Um, I want to take a look at that. Yes. When the world seems like this against you, when your friends and family forget you, it ain't really hard to convince you, looking for something to commit to. It's a really cool visual, and, yeah. and I know you took a lot of time and effort yes. uh, in, in making that. You started rapping on the streets of Philadelphia. I, lo I love the story. You're, you're 15 years old, right about 15. Yes. There's mm -hmm. some people on the corner, and your mother says, mm -hmm. go out, get out so there and get, do that. And you, you freestyle with them, yeah. and they love you, and that video goes viral, and, and here you are uh, today, Grammy nominated. Um, you love, you began with poetry. Yes. And so that, that's what I love about your music and the artistry as a whole, because it's not just about the music or the videos, it's about the whole thing. The so whole tell package. me, what was it about poetry that turned into all of this? Well, I have to, the initial start was Dr. Seuss, his books, like me reading all those rhyming mm. words, I'm like in the colors and the characters. You titled one of your songs, Dr. Seuss. Yeah. I like no, that song. Because, yeah. you know, I just always want to, make sure that I include anything, anything that's real or anything that has affected me, whether it's good or bad, I always want to include that in everything that I do, my art, my music. I think the, the culmination of that is you're the subject of this Hulu documentary, Cypher, yeah. um, that, that has been described as a fictionalized version of your music career, which is kind of what you're talking about. Let's yeah. take a look at that. Yes. I had this strange feeling that my story wasn't mine anymore. It, it felt like I had lost like my hold on it. it or like it just—I just felt like I could be replaced. I, the, I can't explain the feeling. Where does this kind of storytelling come from? So I've always had like a curiosity for acting, mm -hmm. um, and I had the director Chris come to me a few years ago, and he's like, "Tiara, I have this perfect idea. I think you will be perfect for it." And I was afraid, but I was in the midst of like just learning to face my fears. Um, I learned so much about myself. And uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much away of, like on the details of Cypher because I want people to still go stream Absolutely. it on Hulu. Um, yeah, because it's like a twist. And, yeah. Okay, but, uh, well, we yeah, want to talk about twist. the twist. Yeah, we'll but talk I, the twist, I, yeah. I want to ask you this, this, this yeah. final question because mm -hmm. with a lot of artists, you can ask them, hey, what did you mean by this lyric? What did you, mm -hmm. what did you want to get across with this song? I'm interested, you are an immersive experience, whether it's visually you. or you know, sound-wise. What do you want people to get out of your, your body of work? Well, I think I'm just promoting uh, imperfection. Hmm. You know, uh, I think that we all struggle with life and uh, the truth is life is only gonna get harder. But we have to continue to you know, put one foot in front of the other and uh, just give ourselves and each other grace. Absolutely, it's a beautiful message, and you Thank brightened you. our day by coming in. Thanks Thank so, you so much. much. I, and, and I really, I'm so happy to be here. Best of luck with everything, and we do want to tell you that um, uh, you can listen to Tierra's uh, debut album, Worldwide Whack, her debut album, what she's calling, yes. wherever you stream your music, beginning March 15th, and Tierra's award-winning documentary, Cypher, is now streaming on Hulu. Yes. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.
And still to come, we bring you the story of a grandma who might give Caitlin Clark a run for her money on the basketball court. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. So the question is, what would you do Hi. if you saw a mother reject her son's new girlfriend because of the color of her skin? I thought I was going to meet your girlfriend. Uh, you are meeting my girlfriend. This is your girlfriend. Was there a misunderstanding? Well, maybe. <laughs> would you say something? Mom, you're being a little crazy here, I think. Seriously? Yeah. Knock it off. What do you mean, knock it off? So the question is, what would you do Sunday night, all new, right after American Idol on ABC? You should see me. Kind of the strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in a crowd. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag is not okay, it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Welcome back. No matter how old you are, it is never too late to lace up your sneakers and take a jump shot. And one superstar is doing just that. At 84 years old, Shirley Simpson is back on the court, and she's got a goal in mind. Here's Danny New. This is day one of my journey from 84-year-old grandma to WNBA All-Star. Since October, Shirley Simpson has put the entire basketball world on notice. They keep pushing me and saying, Bubba, you can do it. You can do it. A few times a week, Shirley and her two grandsons, Parker and Hunter, train vigorously at their local gym in British Columbia, Canada. I wake up between 5 and 5.30 a.m. and I'm on the gym ready to go by 7 a.m. As they chronicle her mission to make the WNBA in a TikTok series that has garnered millions of views. Here's me emoting on the haters. You can probably guess who writes the script. Went to the weight room where I hit tries. This idea came about after Shirley underwent knee replacement surgery last March. And the boys wanted to keep this massive Toronto Raptors fan motivated with her favorite sport. I wasn't looking after myself, and they took over. It also helped that Parker and Hunter wanted to promote their basketball accessory brand called Court Candy, which you can see she sports in all the videos. I miss you, and I'm, but I'm still going for it for you. But when Shirley's husband of 62 years, Dave, passed away just after the first video's success, this quality time became about a lot more. So it's been just a, a very, you know, keep her busy, keep her mind in a good place. Yeah. They put ice emoji on both my TikTok and IG video. Five months later, Shirley has gotten in great shape, has become an internet celebrity, and as you can see, has even caught the attention of the WNBA and its teams. However, none of those can compare to her favorite part of this experience. It's just terrific being part of your grandson's lives, too. What a great story. Not bad marketing either. Our thanks to Danny for that. And that's our show for tonight. I'm Phil Lipoff. ABC News Live is here for you all night with the latest news, context, and analysis. And you can always find us on Hulu, Roku, Pluto TV, the ABC News app, and of course, abcnews.com. Have a good night. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye.